be here. Welcome, my name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, welcome to another day of creativity. So I am really excited about the project I have for you today. Um, we're going to be doing a fun fold card today, a diagonal fun fold card, at least I think it's called a diagonal fun fold card. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can do it today, that you can create this card. We're going to be playing with the products from the La Shop Suite uh, from Stampin' Up! And uh, this is such a cute and adorable set and it's so fun to play with and you can create all different types of scenes with cute little shops. It's really, really adorable. So we're going to be playing with that today. Um, but before we jump in, I have got a few things to share with you. Um, now let me just bring this up on my other devices so that I can see comments there. Uh, let's see, get that there and I'll just have to refresh my screen over on the computer to be able to see it there. And we'll just mute that. There we go. All right. So if you're if you're here live with me today, um, feel free to craft along with me, or just sit back and relax and enjoy what I have to share with you today. Um, um, if you don't have these products, that's okay. You might like to create the diagonal fold card. Um, with other products, other products that you have there in front of you. So feel free to do that. I'll share with you how um, how to do that. And um, yeah, and if you are watching the replay, thank you so much for coming back and watching the replay. I will be sharing this video. I'm filming here live on YouTube. I'll be sharing it over to my Facebook page later on. Um, so hopefully uh, you will all get to watch the replay so that you can see how to create this card yourself. All right, um, we have got a very cold um, snap. It's well, we, we're in winter now, but the winter, the uh, temperature, I should say, has turned cold very suddenly. And um, we had our first minus degrees yesterday. <laughs> Today, this morning was a little bit warmer. I think it got down to about three degrees this morning. But um, yeah, a little bit, a little bit chilly here in the craft room this morning. So. Um, hopefully we'll warm up when we get into our crafting. Now let me tell you a couple of things that are happening before we jump into that. At the moment, Stampin' Up! has got a couple of promotions running. Um, the first one I'll share with you is the starter kit promotion. So this, it's a great time any time of year to purchase the starter kit and it is the best value in the catalogue. Um, you get fantastic value when you purchase the starter kit. Not only do you get free product, you get free shipping on the starter kit order and then you get an ongoing discount of 20 to 25 percent on all of your Stampin' Up! products so it's always a great time to join at the moment though it's even better time to join because you will get 114 dollars worth of product for free in your starter kit that you get to choose yourself you get to choose all of the products in your starter kit yourself because it's customizable so um is no set products that you need to have. The ones that are in this image are just an example, um, but that's not actually what's in the kit. You get to choose whatever you like to put in the kit. Now you're only going to pay $169 for the starter kit, but you're going to get $283 worth of value in the starter kit at the moment until the end of June. So um, that is additional, on, that is additional um, value on top of what you normally get. Normally you only get to choose $235 worth of product, but at the moment you get to choose 283. So I think it was an extra $44 worth of product, I think it was from memory. Um, so yeah, so this is a great time to join. Um, now I have a beautiful team of um, lovely people and uh, we just have a great time together and we do lots of fun things together. We have a Facebook group where we share our creativity and lots and lots of fun. I keep everyone up to date. We meet um, monthly on Zoom for a team gathering. For those that can join us, it's not a mandatory thing. And I know that people have busy lives, so not everybody can always be there and that's okay. Um, but I do record it and then I send it to our team members so they can watch it back later so they don't miss out on anything. We craft during that time as well together, which is always a lot of fun. 
um, and we do other things throughout the year together as well and we've got our first team retreat coming up our full day in-person crafting retreat coming up in August so um, registrations for that will be closing at the beginning of July so if you'd like to come and join us then we would love to have you we love welcoming new team members um, so feel free to come and join us now all of my links that I'll be talking about today are in the description of this video um, so if you click on my link tree link it'll then open up my link tree and it's got all my different links there and you can um, choose which one you would like to go to um, so yeah you'll find everything there so if joining is something that might be interesting uh, for you then uh, please feel free to click on my join link or if you have more questions feel free to ask me because i'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about joining stampin up and my team and i'd love to um i love to have all the details before i make a decision so i totally understand and i'm happy to answer those questions so get in contact with me and um I am here in Australia. I think I said that at the beginning. Um, so if you are here in Australia and you'd like to join with me, then uh, please let me know and I would love to help you out. All right. Um, now we have got also a designer series paper sale at the moment. And I've got a flyer for that actually. Um, in my link tree is also a uh, link through to this PDF tutorial, uh, PDF, no, not PDF tutorial, <laughs> PDF um, flyer. So you can see all of the designer series papers that are on special and they're reduced by 15%. There's 13 different packs there, all 15% off. Um, so it's a great time to stock up on your designer series paper. So if you've had your eye on some, um, but you've been holding off, it's a great time to do that. Now, if you are actually joining, those discounted papers can be added to your starter kit at the discounted price as well, um, if you would like to get some of those, as well as any other products um, that are in the catalog um, or in the online store. So, because we have the online exclusives as well that you won't find in the catalog. Um, and our kits collection is there too online, which you also won't find in the catalog, um, but any of those products can go into your starter kit as well. Um, a couple of other things we have got or I have got the um, the June tutorial bundle available at the moment so um, this is a collaborative uh, PDF tutorial there are how many have we got this month 47 projects in this tutorial it's like a mega class um, and this one is uh, projects that are designed with the crafty collaborations team or group um, we are a group of demonstrators from all around the world and we collaborate each month on um, tutorials and if you shop with me and you spend over $75 you will get this for free but if um, you're not one of my customers um, or perhaps you're a demonstrator you can purchase this for um, $28 so you can purchase this from me um, from anywhere around the world and you will get the tutorials for $47 um, projects so if you are interested in that then please let me know as well now I don't have a link for this one however um, you can just flick me a message or an email and um, and I can get that one out I can organize with you about payment and then I can get that out to you so yeah lots and lots of beautiful projects there where's my one on there my one's up here yeah, so a little sneaky peek of those 47 projects. So that is awesome. It's great value for $28 as well because you get 47 projects for that. You get all the, you get the uh, photographs of the projects and the step-by-step -step instruction tutorial. So um, yeah, so that's always available every month. I have, there's a different one um, and that is the June 1 for 2023 okay last thing i'm going to tell you before we jump in and, and get to our crafting is currently i have a um ribbon and trim sampler available at the moment there is a link as well in the description for that under my link tree i have two um options for you of packs of ribbon and ribbon and trim and it's the new all the new ones so not the ones that have been carried over from previous catalogs but um, the ones that are brand new in the new annual catalog. 
and um, yeah, there are two options there for you. Very affordable, but a sampler is a great way of getting um, a sample or a portion of lots of different products. So in this case, ribbon and trim, and we all love our ribbon and our bling too, of course. Um, so if you would like to check that out and see if you would like to participate in my ribbon and trim sampler, then um, please click on the link and have a look. All the details are there for you. And there's a registration form there as well if you'd like to participate in that. Thank you to those of you who have already registered for um, my ribbon and trim sampler. And um, registrations are closing next Monday, the 26th of June. So be sure to register before then so that you don't miss out. All right, well, I think it is time to get crafting. So I'm gonna tip the camera down onto the desk and get everything set up for you and we will get started. So I'm gonna cover up the camera while I tip the camera down so I can do all of those transitions and not make you all dizzy. So bear with me one moment and we will do that. Okay. So here we go. So let's hope that everything behaves itself today. I'll do all of these up really tightly. I'm still here. Don't go anywhere. I'm just getting this all set up for you. I've got to do all of the clamps up really tightly so that... Whoop, just zoom in a little bit so that we don't, um, the camera doesn't drop during me filming. All right, there we go. So we'll just zoom in a little bit more. We've got just the edge of that, um, there we go. Had just the edge of the um, stand there. All right, I'm gonna take my jumper off because I'm starting to feel the warmth now. Okay. Great, that looks fairly straight today. Not too bad. Now let's see. We've got just a little bit of a halo of the side of the, the edge of the stand, but hopefully that won't be too annoying. All right, I'll move my keyboard away now because we don't need that now. All right, so any of the products that you see today are available in my online store. You can find it at mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com um, and you can just click there on the shop, um, the shop button. I'm just going to zoom in just a tad more. Bear with me. Just a little bit more. Bring that in a little bit closer. Alrighty, let's move this up and out of the way. Now, also too, if you are shopping with me, whoop, this is my... Um, June 2023 host code. So if you're shopping with me this month, be sure to use this host code when you're shopping with me. And um, for orders over $75, you will receive um, that fantastic tutorial with the 47 projects. I'm just going to adjust my lights because I forgot to do that. And we need light on the desk, don't we? Otherwise, we can't see anything. Um, yeah, so be sure to use that host code and um, I'll be able to send you that um, tutorial. Alrighty, now what we're going to be playing with, let me share with you. So this is our beautiful annual catalogue. This is the 2023 to 2024 annual catalogue. Um, and in this catalogue is lots and lots of beautiful products. Again, if you would like one of these catalogues, feel free to um, let me know if you're here in Australia and I would love to get one of those out to you if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you already have a demonstrator, feel free to ask your demonstrator for a copy of the catalogue um, and they can get one of those out to you. Oh, hello, Lou, all the way from Alabama, USA. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you here. Okay, so today we are going to be playing with the Le Shop suite. In fact, we're mainly going to be focusing on the designer series paper. So on Monday, 
I created um, a project using the stamps and dies, which I don't even know where I put that now. Where did I put that? Um, hmm, very good question. I don't know. I've got so many projects on the go at the moment. I'm not quite sure where I put it. Um, and I don't have it here with me right now, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, we used the, the stamp set and dies on Monday and created a really cute card, which was my team swap card. We just had, um, swaps going on in my team. Oh, hi Pam. How are you from Queensland? Great to have you with us, Pam. Thank you so much for, um, for registering for the ribbon trim, uh, the ribbon and trim sampler, I should say. Um, yeah, thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so I showed everybody how I made this on um, Monday, my swap card, but today we're going to be focusing on the designer series paper. It is such cute paper, um, adorable to make those little shop scenes, and there's some great textures on the back as well. Now, I have just ordered some more of that yesterday because I only had a quarter pack left over from um, my paper shares that I held earlier um, when was that last month I think last month when the catalog went live I had a paper share um, and I participated in my own paper share as well and um, so yeah so I only had a quarter pack but I am designing a class with this suite so um, there will be a class coming up in the next couple of weeks with this suite this won't be one of the cards from the class but this is just an additional project so you can find this on page pages 30 to 31 of the catalog um, now if you love all of the products so we've got the designer series paper we've got some sequins as well which are great for shaker cards or just for embellishing you just need to adhere them with say some um, multi-purpose liquid glue or the fine tip glue pen then there's the, also the stamp set and the dies which you can get together as a bundle now, all of those products can be purchased individually, or you can just, if you want all of them, you just have to put in one code, which is over here on page 30. And this is the code here for the entire suite. Um, and you'll get that entire suite. Now, if you wanted to um, pop this in your starter kit, you can also pop this in your starter kit as well. Um, so, yeah. So there you go. So that's what we're playing with today. But well, let's have a close look at the paper. Um, and as I said, I don't have the full pack of the papers at the moment because I've got more coming. This is just what is left over. So I have already chopped into this. So um, some of these little buildings in here, and I've got extra ones here that I've kept. Um, these extra little ones I've been chopping up to play with today, but how adorable are these papers? And these do come in a 12 by 12 sheet. So I've just cut each sheet in half to use those. I've kept these little ones on that were off the edges as well, because you'll see how some of them are sort of off the edge, um, because we can use these on our projects as well. So I've kept those ones. So we've got that one and on the reverse side, we've got this really cool pattern. We've got um, this one, which I've taken some of this off to use today. So you can't quite see all of them, but you will see the rest when we are creating our project today. Um, I love this detail on the back. That's a really nice design on the back of that one. We've got these shops. So we've got bookshops, we've got um, plant shops. We've got, um, this one looks like a, like a salon, like a, um, yeah, like a makeup or hairdressing salon. Um, in the other ones, we've got a noodle bar, a lolly shop, a bakery, um, clothing store. We've got, um, looks like a, um, a restaurant and we've got these little images here as well we're going to use some of these some of these little pot plants we're going to die cut some of those today so we do have some dies that do um die cut some of these images we're going to use the little um the little board the little sign board there we're going to use that today um this one's got a really nice pattern on the back as well love that one 
and then we've got this one which I cut a strip of I cut a couple of strips off this one yesterday so this one is a little bit narrower um, but this one's got um, some bread some noodles um, a little tart or cake some ice creams some forks so lots of fun and then on the other side we've got this beautiful cobblestone um, well, it looks like a cobblestone path to me, and we're going to be using some of that one today too. Oh, I can feel a sneeze coming. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, this one has got books and paint and flowers, so lots and lots of fun with that one. And on the other side, we've got this beautiful Daffodil Delight design. And then this one, I really love this one, so I'm going to create something with this probably for my class. Um, this blue and white design which i really love just the sketchy outline design of those um, little shops which is super cool and then on the other side we've got all the little miniatures so even if you want to like make a little miniature town you could make um, a little town with miniatures or you can use that as a background piece so there you go so yeah so i've got a, a um another whole pack of that coming which i ordered yesterday um in the uh, free shipping day we had free shipping yesterday um here in australia today in america it's probably still going on um but yesterday we had free shipping here in australia so i ordered this and some other papers and some other bits and pieces as well um so yeah always great to take uh, advantage of those specials and save yourself some money all right so here is the stamp set um we're not using too much of the stamp set today, but we will use the sentiments today. Um, but we've got the dies as well, which we are going to be using a couple of these today, or actually a few of these today. So I'll show those to you as well. So that's the stamp set and the dies. Um, the dies will cut out the two parts of the building. So you can have a single story building, or then you can build the layers um, on top so you can have multi-story buildings which is super cool um, there's a signpost we've got some lights here that you can put in the windows we've got some books and some pastries and even a little cafe setting that can all go in the window here and then we've got that little sign and the plants like on the paper um, but if you want to color them in your own colors then they're here and then this is a decorative part that you can um, put in the window. And I'm thinking also too that, that that might even fit on the awning. I wonder, because I haven't tried this, but I'm thinking it would also fit. Yep, it also fits in the little awning die. So you could do a decorative awning or you could probably put it in the window as well. Lots of cute little pieces. We're going to be using the lamp post and the um, little bench seat, some of the greenery today. And we're going to be using the plant and the little signpost dies today too. These are the ones we're probably not going to be using today. Oh, we might use the, the label actually. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of different um, pieces to play with. So I love these types of um, sets that you can piece together your little, you know, your little scene. It's lots of fun. So we'll leave those aside because we'll need those today. All right. Now, um... I have seen this um, diagonal fold card, the diagonal fun fold card um, around quite a bit lately. But also too, I recently received a card from one of my team members, one of my team members, Julie. And uh, this is the one that she created. So you can see Julie's got the, the DSP on the back as well as on the front, front sides and that all folds together and makes this really fun um, sort of diagonal cut front which is just really fun like it's something a little bit different sits up really lovely like that so it's a really nice card to display um, and you've got those great angles going on so um, yeah so that was my beautiful card from my beautiful team member Julie so from that um, and I had a look at some videos now I'm giving all the measurements today in centimeters because I am working from A4 cardstock. So A4 cardstock um, here in Australia and in Europe and in New Zealand, it's a different size to the American letter size cardstock. 
So if you want to make one of these with letter size cardstock, I do know that, um, um, oh my goodness, her name has just gone out of my head. <laughs> It'll come back to me. Um, there is a demonstrator in America who just did a video recently of this card in Imperial measurements. So if you want to know, oh, Jackie Bolheis of Klompen Stampers. So if you look up Jackie Bolheis of Klompen Stampers on YouTube, you'll find her video. So I've altered the measurements for Australian measurements or like metric measurements. Okay, so just explaining why I'm not giving any measurements in Imperial because um, it wouldn't work with your size cardstock. My measurements wouldn't work with your size cardstock. And yeah, they don't translate exactly. So I'm starting with a piece of A4 cardstock. I've got some templates here um, to help us. Now there's two different ways you can do this. I'm doing a larger size today so that when I pop it into an envelope, and I've got my little templates here for my extra pieces, when I pop that into an envelope, it's gonna fit in a standard size envelope with a little bit of space as well, but the size from on the longest side is the length of a card size that we would normally have, which is 14.8. Um, 14 our usual full cards, if we cut it, if we cut our card stock in half exactly, I'm not explaining this very well today. I think I'm still half asleep. <laughs> normally, if we cut a piece of A4 card stock in half, then we would have um, our folded card would be 14.85 by 10.5. Okay, this one is 14.85 by, um, oh, what was the width now? Now I can't remember what the width was. It's a little bit narrower because of the diagonal fold. I think, was it um, 10? 10 centimetres, so it's half a centimetre narrower. But anyway, so yeah. So that's what you get. That's the template for that one. Okay, so that's what the template is going to look like. Um, these little pieces here are the extra DSP that are gonna sit inside of them. And um, well, actually, they're gonna go the other way. They're gonna go this way. So I've got those ready, and I'm gonna show you a little tip as to how to cut those angles, which I learned from Jackie Bolheis. Okay, now that's, so that's the one we're gonna be making today. But my original one, so Jackie was showing how you can get two of these cards out of one sheet of cardstock. Now again, hers was in um, Imperial measurements. I had a go in metric measurements and I worked it out, but it just means that you end up with, and this wasn't, this one didn't have the best folds, this one was better. It works out that you end up with a shorter card. So it's quite a bit smaller than the one we're making today. But, okay, so I'll just show you the difference. And it's great that you can see the, the difference in the colors. Okay, so the white one we're making today is a little bit taller. This one is a bit shorter, but if you're cutting the tall one that we're going to make today, you will have some leftover cardstock, so you'll have some off cuts, which is fine because you can use that for um, other stamping, um, sentiments, all those sorts of things. So you will have a bit of a, an off cut. However, if you do the smaller one, you can get two, if I flip that over, you can get two, oh, still got my little sticky on there, from the one piece. Okay, so I'll just show you. Oh, I haven't got that round the right way. There we go. So you can get two from that. But I just thought, oh, the card looked a little bit too small for what I wanted. So, yeah, so there's a couple of different ways you can do it. All right, I'm going to show you the other way today to make a, um, a, a slightly larger card. But you will get a little bit of off cut. All right. So, um, well, actually, I'll, I'll just tell you this one first. Here's my little sticky. I'll put the sticky down on the, the desk so that you can see that in case you want to take a little screenshot. Um, so if you want to cut one like this and get two 
pieces or two cards out of the one A4 sheet, you're going to cut at, oh sorry, you're going to measure across the short end of your card, you're going to measure at um, 7.5 from the top right hand side and 7.5 from the bottom left hand side. Okay, and then you're going to cut your diagonal. So you just put a little pencil mark and then you're going to cut your diagonal across there. Then that will give you the two cards. Then you're going to score this at 9.9 um, .9 and 19.8, which will be the same score lines we're doing on the one we're making today. So I'll show you how to measure that up on your trimmer in a moment. Okay, so if you want to get two out of one piece of cardstock, they're the measurements that you're going to need. But just know that this is going to be a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter, okay, than your standard card. So if I put that in an envelope, we're going to have lots of space left over, okay? Which is fine, which is totally fine. It, it'll, it'll look great too. It's just that you have, yeah, it's a little bit smaller, so you don't have as much space to play with. All right, now for my one today, I'm going to show you how to make it um, from scratch from the beginning so we're going to need a pencil and a ruler and then you're going to need um, a trimmer as well with a cutting and a scoring blade okay so we are going to mark at so from the top right hand corner here we're going to mark we're going to put a mark at 8.5 centimeters oh actually sorry we're going to go at um, yeah is that right 8.5 yeah 8.5 and then hang on a minute which way am I doing this let me just get this right is that right did I do that right I'm just thinking, which way have I got it? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, so 18, so we're going 8.5 on this side. And then on the other side, on the from the bottom left-hand corner, we're measuring up, oh no, which way did I do it? This way. Yes, this way. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's okay. I had I did make a few of these last night, but I was mucking around with the measurements and I was doing it in different ways. And so now I've confused myself which way I did it. All right. On this side, we're going to measure at 14.8. Okay, so we're going 14.8. Okay, so now we're going to line up and let me just double check that I've got that right. There and there. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So on the left-hand side, we're measuring 14.8 and putting a mark. On the right-hand side, measuring again from the top, we're measuring at 8.5. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was doing it all different weird ways last night and I thought, how am I going to, which way is going to be the easiest to explain it? And I thought that would be easier, but then I got myself mixed up. <laughs> so it's all good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, trimmer and we're going to put those pencil marks on the, tri the um, cutting track, okay? Now the cardstock is going to go over the edge a little bit. Don't worry too much about that. In fact, if you're going to have it going across the uh, off the edge like that, if you can, um, hang on, let me just line these up and I'll explain to you as I do it. So lining up the pencil marks in the cutting track there. There we go. All right, so when you're cutting this, if you have the, um, if it's, it, because it's going to go over the edge a little bit, or oh, you can't see that. It's going over the edge a little bit here because the cardstock is at an angle. If you have it going over that side rather than on the inside, um, yeah, you'll get less of a sort of dint on your cardstock. All right, so we've got those lined up. I'll just turn my trimmer back around and double check that, just make sure I've got them lined up. And then we're just gonna cut at that angle. Okay, so you'll get the two pieces there. Now we'll keep our trimmer out. 
All right, now that top part that we just cut, we're going to discard that, okay? Because that's going to be um, not as big. Now, if you wanted to, you could score that and make that into a smaller card, but you would the front panel would be very narrow because this, if I turn that over, this will actually become the front panel. So it's only going to be very small. So if you wanted to use it, you could use it. We're going to keep that as scrap today. All right, now this piece, this is the one that we're going to be using. We've got the 8.5 at this side and we can double check. It looks a little bit um, smaller once you've cut it, but it is actually the right size as we measured at 8.5. And this one is the 14.8 um, height here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip our cardstock over and with the longer side, the 14.8 side on the right side, we're going to do some scoring. So we're going to open up the arm of our trimmer and we're going to use this straight edge now along the top here, along our little ledge here, to do the scoring. So we're going to measure at 9.9 centimetres. Okay, 9.9 .9 centimetres. And we're going to score. And then we're going to move that along to 19.8. And that will give us two even score marks. And that'll give us three even panels. So we'll end up with each three, each of the three panels all the same width. Okay, so now when we fold this, okay, we've got our score lines there. We're going to fold this one that's nearest the long side. We're going to fold that towards the long side. Okay, and then this next panel, we're going to fold back on itself again. So we're making like a Z fold. And then if we take our bone folder and just burnish those fold lines, all those score lines that will help us help our card to sit down flat okay and then that creates our diagonal fold card so it's going to sit up like that now the more we fold it because the cardstock is quite stiff the more we fold it the the nicer it's going to sit down um, but it is going to want to pop up a little bit but that's okay because we're creating a scene on our um, card so that will that will look great when it's sitting up now you might want to just rub out your little pencil marks. Just get my eraser, whoops, it's flying across the table. Rub out those little pencil marks. I didn't get one on that side, so that's good. Okay, there we go. So now we've got the basis of our card. I'm just using a um, basic white cardstock base. I didn't actually mention that, but yeah, I'm just using basic white today. Um, for my card base and then for my pieces for inside I'm using some crumb cake All right, so let me put my template away Right now the next thing you're going to need is some layers For the inside of the card or for each of those panels. So what I've got is I have got some that I have already um, embossed ahead of time, but I'll give you the measurements for those. So we've got our three pieces. So this is our card. Actually, we've got four pieces. So we're going to have one for that one, one for that one, and one for that one. Oops, smallest one there. And then this one is going to go on the back of this one. Now, if you wanted to, you could do um, another set of each of these and put, put one on the back of each side of these because as I'll show you in um, Julie's card, when, you, when your card um, is displayed, you can actually see this panel here, okay? Um, you don't see the other ones so much, but depending on how you're displaying your card, you might like to put um, designer series paper or more embossed cardstock on these other panels. I'm just today just doing this one here. Okay. And then, um, then I'll do each of those panels on the inside as well. Um, now what you'll need to do is to start with, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to create the angle on these 
to coordinate with the angle on the card. But these are the pieces that you're going to start with. Okay, so bring in our templates. So you're gonna start with a piece that is 9.5 by 14.4. Oops. 9.5 by 12.3 and 9.5 by 10.2, which is what these, these ones here are. Just move my card away for a moment, okay? So if you wanna take a, a screenshot of those. Now, as I said, I've cut two of this one for today. Okay, so we've got two of those there. All right, and then, and I realize I'm off camera a little bit so you can't see these. So I'm just gonna move them up, move these up so I can move these up so you can see everything. Okay, so that's what you're gonna start with. Now I've gone ahead and embossed these with the um, the exposed brick 3D embossing folder because I want it to look like a brick background for my project today. But if you're using designer series paper, you know, or you might want to use a different embossing folder depending on what your project is going to look like, um, then yeah, do that at this point before you cut the um, the angle. Okay. All right, so that is your, they're your templates there. Now, to get the angle, we want the, the angles, and see we've got nice even angles between each of those um, pieces. To get the angle, we need to bring our card back in. Okay, we'll do one at a time. So let's put these ones over to the side. What we're going to do is you are going to need your um, paper snips or scissors for this part, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to line up your paper or your, or your cardstock so that you've got an even edge or an even border, I should say, on both sides. So my layers are cut so that I have a two millimeter border. So I'll end up with a two millimeter border all the way around. Okay, so you want a two millimeter border on the left and the right side. What you're going to do is take your piece of cardstock or designer series paper and that top corner, you want that to line up with that, the very edge on the left hand, sorry, the right hand side. You want that to line up with the top of that angle. Okay, so making sure that you still have your two millimeter border either side. Okay, so we've got that lined up there, that top corner. Then you're going to hold that, flip your cardstock over, or your paper over, and then you're gonna take your scissors and you're just going to cut along the angle, following the angle of your card. Okay, so you're gonna do that. Then when you flip that back over, you're gonna move that back down to give you your two millimeter border all the way around. Okay, can you see that there? Sorry, I keep going off camera. My camera's up a little bit higher today um, on the desk. So. so then you've got your two millimeter border all the way around. Okay, so I'll show you again with the next one. So we'll put that one aside ready to um, use. We're gonna to go to our next piece, which is, this one is cut at, let me get my measurements here. So this one is cut at 9.5 by 12.3. I forgot to mention what the first one was. The first one for this taller section, this one was 9.5 by 14.4. Okay, all right, so we're doing 9.5 by 12.3 and we're going to do the same thing. So have our point here, our top right hand corner up there at the top of the angle, just on the edge there. And then we want to make sure we've got our two millimeter border on the left and the right. So we'll just shimmy that across, shimmy that up a little bit. 
make sure we've got our even border both sides yeah okay good and then flip that over do the same thing again and just trim the angles it's a little bit harder with um, cardstock because the cardstock is obviously thicker there we go and then when we shimmy that back down for our two millimeter border at the bottom we'll have our two millimeter border at the top as well okay so that's our second piece and then the third piece oh we've got two of those to do so in fact um, we want to do the opposite side so I'm not sure is that going to end up being the same let's see if we do that this is the one for the back side and in fact it's at the opposite angle because it's on the back okay so we'll do that one now so this is the second one line that up yep okay so and then we'll flip that over so yeah because it's on the back side it's at the opposite angle so it's not going to be the same as this one so you can't just line them up and just cut them okay um, you have to put this one on the back side and then repeat the process but you're going in the opposite angle there we go all right so that's the back one so I need to keep that one separate so I don't get them mixed up. But you'll see anyway that they are opposite. Okay, because one is the front, one is the back. Okay, so put the back one over there. And then our last little one for our front panel, we're going to do the same. So two millimeter border, line up the top right hand corner with the top of that angled edge of our card. At our two millimeter border yep hold that in place flip it over and trim along the edge of our cardstock our card base there we go so now we've got each of our panels now at this point if you wanted to you could put a little bit of ink over the top of that or whatever um, for your brick background. I'm not gonna worry about that today. I'm just gonna keep it really simple and easy. Um, but we are going to adhere these now to our card base. Okay, so, so I hope that helped you in um, creating your, your card base and your layers for your card. All right, and then we're just going to adhere each of these panels in the card with our little two millimeter border all the way around. Get that lined up. There we go. All right, so that's one that's running away from me today. Two. Now, I love this design on this. Um, exposed brick 3d embossing folder and you can use either side of this depending on the look that you're going for if you want the embossed side or the debossed side i'm having the debossed side today i like that side of the the um the embossing or debossing i should say there we go now I did think um, originally, I've got a bit of glue on me, let me get that off. I did think originally that I might um, have, so this is crumb cake. I don't even know if I mentioned that before. Did I mention that? Oh, hi Megan, how are you? Great to have you with us. Hi Brenton, how are you? Great to have you both here. Come and join the party. We are making a diagonal fun fold card and we're gonna decorate it with the Le Shop um, DSP. Um, now, what was I going to say? Oh, yes, I was thinking about whether or not to have the same color card base as the layers and just have it all crumb cake. But then I thought, no, there's a lot of white in the designer series paper that we're using today. So I thought, no, I'll keep it. Um, I'll keep it white. 
All right, so that's the, the side that we're going to be displaying. But when we close the card, see how you can see this exposed piece here? So we're going to put another panel here. And look, I probably will go ahead later on and do these other panels as well, to be honest, so that they all look the same. And this is going to look like the back of the, the brick wall. This is the other side of the brick wall. But just I just wanted to show you um, the main parts of the card and then I wanted to get to decorating it. Okay, so now when we close our card, it's going to look like that. Okay, so then we open it up, we close it up, and then when you're displaying it, they're the layers that you're going to see. As I said, you can add the other ones on those two layers as well if you want to, um, but you don't have to because they're, they're the, the sides that you're going to see. Okay, when you're standing it up, that's what you're going to see. If I show you that way, it probably, yeah, you can see it better that way. Alrighty, okay, so let me just clean the glue from my fingers and I'll take a little sip of my juice. I haven't had my breakfast yet today. I grabbed a glass of orange juice as I was um, coming, well, not as I was coming down the stairs. Once I got down the stairs, I grabbed a glass of orange juice and um, yes, I will, I will have breakfast, however, <laughs> when I get to it. All right, so they're my, my layers. All right, now the beautiful paper. Now I have taken some pieces and I've done some choppy chop chop already last night. I've got some extra crumb cake here. I wasn't sure what I was going to use for the um, the sentiment label yet. So I just kept out some extra um, pieces of crumb cake. But I've gone ahead and done some choppy chop chop. And as I showed you earlier, that um, designer series paper, on one side we had um, some fun designs with the the bread and the ice cream cones and the little cakes and things on the other side we've got this gorgeous cobblestone um, design so we're going to use that as a path or a um, footpath sidewalk whatever you would like to call it uh, we're going to use that today so this measures 1.5 centimeters so I've got three of those 1.5 centimeters by 9.5 centimeters so that it fits on each one of the layers or across each one of the layers. I've already chopped up some of my shops from the designer series paper um, and I was trying to play with those last night to work out where I want each of them to go. Now this one here, this one was one of the pieces from the side of the paper and I've got lots of extra little bits here. This one came off one of the edge pieces, uh, this one here. It came from the edge here. So don't think that just because you have those little pieces that are off the edge and they're only half of a shop or half of a design of any of your papers, um, that they're no use because they are. We're actually gonna use that and layer that behind this shop here. Okay, so it looks like that we've got two shops there. So nobody will know that it's only half a shop because it will look like it's sitting you know, back behind the other one. We're gonna mount this one up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but yeah, and then we've got from the designer series paper, we're using some of these cute little pots and we've got some of the little signs from this one. So we're going to use some of those. So I've just roughly chopped those out. We will die cut those. We're gonna use some other elements from the dies as well. So I've just got some scraps of um, basic black, granny apple green and pecan pie okay so we might do a little bit of die cutting um, as I said I went ahead and I fussy cut these shops now you can use whichever ones you want of course but I went ahead and fussy cut those last night from the DSP just using my paper snips um, just to save time today because I thought it'll it's everything will take too much time otherwise so just trying to save a little bit of time today. Okay, so I die cut those um, 
I've got my, my little road there. We've got our card. So let's do some other die cutting. And then we can piece everything together and make our little, our little um, street of shops. So I've got my mini here. Hang on, I'm just going to move all these pieces out the way. All right, I've got my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine today. We're going to use that and we'll grab our plates that come with it. So we need our number one base plate. I love my mini. Um, my number two base plate, actually, I think I'm going to swap them. This one's getting a bit bowed. So I think I'm going to put that one on the top and this one, which is flatter on the bottom. They do bow over time, but you can buy replacement plates. And let's bring in our dies. So I want one of the lamp posts. In fact, I had a couple of pieces. Yeah, let's just use this one. And I might even cut this a bit narrower. Using up my scraps. It's great to use your scraps for little bits and pieces like this. So keep, make sure you keep all of those scrap pieces of cardstock that you have. Don't chuck them away because um, they come in so handy for these sorts of things. I'm going to use some of this greenery and die cut some of those. So we'll do a couple of those. Let's just trim some of that cardstock. By trimming the cardstock, it means that I can get more pieces on my plates and also too i'm not wasting cardstock because sometimes if your plates are very um, cut up like mine are because i use them all the time um, when you run your cardstock through um, these marks can actually get on any excess cardstock that'll be there and so it can dent your cardstock and put yucky marks in that and so i don't want to waste my cardstock basically all right what else do we need we need a little bench seat, a little park bench. So we'll cut one of those, just stick that down. Just using a bit of washi tape here just to hold my dies in place so they don't slide around. Then we've got one little plant. Now we've got two plant dies because um, I'm wondering if I might need more than one plant. We've got two little plant dies. They're exactly the same, but it just means that you can um, cut more than one at a time. Now these little plants are from the designer series paper and the dies fit those beautifully. I've just, just because they're small, they're a little bit more fiddly. So I'm just trying to get the die wrapped around that and adhered. Here we go. We've got our little sign. I was maybe going to do another one. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll take this one. I'll just grab this one from here. And we'll cut that one as well. Oh, do I cut that one too? Do I cut that one as well? Might need a little bit more washi. Actually, let's tear a little bit off this piece. We don't need quite that much on that piece. Wrap that around the little pot. There we go. And then we need our little die for our sign. So we'll take that. Now I haven't created the um, the sign for the top of the shop. I am going to put a sign on the top of the shop and we'll come back to um, doing that one in a little bit. I just don't have that ready to die cut yet, which I probably should have done that first, shouldn't I? But I haven't decided which one I'm using yet. So that's why I hadn't um, stamped that yet. I thought I'll put together the, the scene first and then we'll come back for the sentiment later once I've decided what color. All right, so we've got all of those on there. Let's die cut those. Giving our little machine a good workout. Um, 
Yes, Megan. Yes, there is a die for this set. Um, the dies don't actually cut the shops out from the designer series paper though, but it does die cut the shop from the stamps um, as well as the little awning. So we've got detail for the awning there or you can use the detail from the dies. Um, these pieces here, the little cafe, the cakes and the books, they are designed to sit or to be stamped inside the window here. Um, this is a sign that you can use for at the top or you can use it as um, a sentiment and there is a die for that. Um, and then these two here are actually the ones that I have just used from the designer series paper, but you can stamp your own. These are the little lights that go inside the um, shop. Um, you can die cut the little windows out of the shop as well as well as this big window as well. You can die cut that out as well once you've stamped it. If you want to make a shaker card, for instance, or you want to put something else behind that um, window. Yeah, so there's lots of different things that you can do. Um, you've even got this little die here, which I think might be for inside the door. And this one here, um, this one here is for the small sentiments, I think. This one here, yeah. Yeah, and you can die cut those little lights as well. So these lights here, you can die cut those and um, yeah, then you can mount them or yeah, do whatever with them. You've got the awning and you've got all the greenery as well. This one is also a greenery that wraps around the, um, the tops of the buildings. Okay, so let's pop all of these out. But yeah, the shops in the actual DSP, um, I don't think they coordinate with the dies at all. I think they need to just be um, fussy cut, but they're quite easy to fussy cut. They're very easy straight lines. All right, so we'll just poke out our little bench seat from our die. Got our little release holes there in the back of the die. There we go. I love this little bench seat. It is so adorable. Look at that, isn't that just so cute? Get rid of those pieces. All right, we need to put some of these back on here so we don't lose them. There's another pot plant. All these tiny little dies. I really do need to get these dies onto my magnetic sheets so that I don't lose them because they're so little. Having all these extra um, dies makes it so much quicker to die cut all of these elements. Imagine if we had to fussy cut all of these little elements. That would take forever. Okay, just release our little lamp post. I think this is my favorite die in the whole set. Oh, this and the little bench seat. A little lamp post. There we go. Isn't that just adorable? Um, we took our dog to the groomer yesterday and out the front of our groomer's um, grooming um, parlor, she actually has a beautiful lamp post um, up against a brick um, pillar, like a brick, a, a pillar is part of the fence. And um, I said to my daughter yesterday, can we just stop and just take a photo of the, <laughs> the lamp post? But we, we didn't, we, um, we kept going because we had to get our, our puppy home. But, um, oh, it was just so adorable. And I was like, oh, it's just like, it's just like our little die. And it was a bit more intricate, um, her lamp post. But it was just so cute. There we go. All right, so we've got a bit of greenery there as well to dress up our little shops. Okay. All right, so I think that's all the pieces we're going to use at the moment. Um, you never know, we might add to that. Okay, we'll pop our machine out of the way for the moment. Oh, another set to add to the list, Megan. Yes, this one is so much fun. Um, I created a card on Monday on my Facebook Live 
and um, I used the stamp set and the die bundle. I didn't use the DSP on my project on Monday. So go back and check that one too, Megan, because um, that was actually my swap card for my team swap. And it was a really cute card as well, using the stamps and dies. All right, so there's all of our little pieces. Let's bring in on all of our other little pieces. So we've got our three pieces of our sidewalk or our path. We've got our little shops. So I've got, this is how my shops are, are going to go. So I've got a bakery. I had to have a lolly shop or a candy store, as you, you say in America. We call them lollies, you call them candy, same, same. <laughs> and we've got an art store, of course, because we're crafters. So we had to have the art store on there as well. Um, oh, hi, Kathy, how are you? You just got this sweet, oh, fantastic. And you haven't used it yet. Oh, well, here you go. I hope that you'll get a little bit of inspiration today then. It's a, a great sweet, I love it. All right, so here is our, our um, card base that we already created with our diagonal fold, our fun fold card. Um, and we are gonna create our little scene on here. So the first thing we need to do is to put down our little cobblestone path. Now my cobblestone um, design is going sideways, which my daughter said, well, that makes sense, mum, because if you think about it, when people are walking along the path, it depends which way they're going as to what angle they're looking at the cobblestone. I thought, well, that makes sense too. Um, just make sure if you have cut your cobblestone path that you have the cobblestone going in the same direction. It would look a bit weird if I had one going in the opposite direction. So yeah, so we just need to make sure that we have um, that. Now again, these pieces are 9.5 centimeters long by 1.5 centimeters wide. And we're going to put a piece of each of those, each of each of those, each of that, a piece each on each panel of our card. Okay, there we go. So we're going to pop that right down the bottom here along the bottom of our brick, our exposed brick embossed piece. Okay, so that's our, our little path along there. So I made this card up, well, I designed this card very late last night, so I didn't have time to create a sample. And also too, because I only have limited amount of the designer series paper at the moment till my, my new paper pack arrives um, next week, I thought, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna use up too many of the little shops so that I made sure that I had plenty for today. So I had choices. I was sitting, thinking last night and playing around with the different little shops, deciding which one I was going to use, which ones I was going to use for the project today. There's so many choices, like you could use any of them and it would be really cute. All right, so there we've got our little path flowing along there. All right, so this is how, I've got gluey fingers again. This is how I'm going to have my shops. Now, what you have to be careful of, or mindful of, I should say, is when you fold your card, okay, this panel is on the outside folded edge. So it doesn't matter if you have something hanging over that. This is only 10 centimeters wide and our envelopes fit a 10.5 centimeter wide card. In fact, I think they fit a little bit bigger than that. So if you had something hanging over a little bit over this edge, it wouldn't matter so much, okay? But just be mindful that it doesn't hang over too much because you need it still to fit in your envelope, which I have an envelope here, okay? So yeah, and you don't want it to get damaged either because remember this is just paper, so it's a lot softer and more flexible than the cardstock. So you don't want it to hang over really too much. But when you get to this panel here on the inside, be mindful of this fold here because that's gonna fold that way. So if you have anything hanging over this edge or this edge, it's gonna get creased when you fold your card closed. Okay, so just be mindful of that when you're decorating your card. Just some little tips there as we go. All right, so I'm gonna have that one there. This one is going over this side, and then we're gonna have that one and that one. 
And then we're going to put all of our little decorative elements. My little lamp post is going to go on this side. Oh, helps if I put it up the right way. My little lamp post is going to go over here. So I'm going to pop these shops up on some dimensionals. So let's bring in all my, my dimensionals. Hang on, I'll just pop the glue on that one. I mean the lid, the lid on the glue. So I've got, I do have full sheets of my dimensionals, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to pull out all my bits and pieces that have been sitting in my... Um, in my little box up there and I'll use up some of those today because we want to make sure that we use all of our dimensionals and don't waste them don't waste all those edge pieces and things okay so I think I'm going to start with this panel here because this one I want to sit flat and then this one is going to be mounted up because I want this one to look like it's behind okay so I'm going to put some glue on this one so we'll put that one down first. Just put glue all over that one. Whee. There we go. Okay. And I want them just sitting just on that path. I don't want them too far down on the path because, you know, the path is for walking. There we go. So that one's sitting down there flat and then this one is going to go up on dimensionals so let's get some of these dimensional just getting the glue off my fingers again get my old paper snips which are a little bit blunt and we'll take oh look I've got one I've actually got one there so let's wait where did that go oh on my finger we'll use that one there and then these ones I'm going to cut these pieces that one across there and we've got another piece there so let's use that and then let's see we'll cut that one there and we'll just run that all the way down we'll just use that whole edge piece there why not just use up all of our bits and then we've got this piece down here. And now I've finished my sheet. Yay! I love it when I finish a sheet of dimensionals. <laughs> it's like an accomplishment, finishing a sheet of dimensionals. All right. I had this extra piece floating around as well in my container. So I'll put a piece there. Now, remember, these little shops are, are designer series paper. So they are only um, thin in comparison to the cardstock. So you want to make sure that you use plenty of dimensionals so that um, it's very well supported. So you're not going to get any little saggy bits. All right. So let's take off all of the backing pieces. Now, if you're not familiar with our Stampin' Dimensionals, um, it's just mounting foam that is double-sided adhesive. Just gives you a little bit of lift to the elements on your um your project and I'm just using all the edge pieces because the dimensionals themselves when you get them we have them in two different sizes we've got the standard size and the minis they come in little hexagonal shapes on the sheet but you get these bits around the edges and that's what I'm just using at the moment is to just use up all of those um, extra little bits all right and then we're going to add this one now we've got to be watch be careful of that fold line there so we don't want to go over that and because my shop is cut off here, because it was from the edge of the um, designer series paper, I want to overlap this enough so that it's not going to be seen. And I might just put that one down just a little bit. I don't want that edge to be seen. So I'll just put that down a little bit there. There we go. Our sentiment label is going to go up here. We'll add that a bit later. And yep, this one is the next one. All right. So let's use up some more of these pieces. Um, hey, Cindy, how are you? Oh, you were just finishing your supper. No worries at all. All good. Well, the replay is always there if you want to go back and watch the replay. So feel free to do that later on. Um, but we are making a diagonal fun fold card today. 
and decorating it with the Le Shop Suite or the Le Shop Designer Series paper actually. Oh well, we have used the dies a little bit also to cut some of the elements and I'm just using up all of these. Look at all these great pieces that we are getting out of that designer series paper oh what am i talking about out of the out of the um stamp and dimensionals is what i meant all these edge pieces from the stamp and dimensionals but yes we were also getting some great some great pieces out of the designer series paper from the shop as well oh my goodness i don't know what it is about thursday mornings i don't know if it's because i'm a little bit rattled because I'm on YouTube or if it's just because I'm still half asleep because normally when I go live on um, Mondays it's in the afternoon so you know I've been awake for several hours and I'm uh, quite awake and mornings are just you know I'm not a morning person everyone <laughs> I'm really not <laughs> uh, is anybody else not a morning person I'm a late night owl. I like staying up late at night. Um, it's when I'm most creative as well is late at night when it's quiet and everyone's gone to bed and the TV is off and um, there's no disruptions. No, nobody coming in to ask me questions or to tell me things. So that's why I like late nights. But then I, I start my days late usually too because I'm up so late. There we go okay we're going to add some little elements here and then we'll do this one too um mornings are not fun megan oh you're one of my mob awesome yes i totally agree mornings are not fun and especially at the moment because our weather down here in sydney um and i'm in western sydney so we actually get colder weather um than the main part of Sydney because out here out west we are out near the Blue Mountains and so we're not near the coast not near the ocean anyway it's been freezing and um yeah it's a struggle it's a struggle getting up at the moment in the mornings it's just so cold and the house is freezing we do have the heating on right now though so it is it's warming up <laughs> Uh, Cindy says she's an early bird and early to bed. Oh, there you go. We're all so different, aren't we? Yeah, some people love those early mornings. I'm just not one of them. Never have been, but when I used to work full time um, at the preschool, I used to have to get up very early in the mornings. And oh my goodness, it was such a struggle but I'm glad now I can just get up at my in my own time and take my time and do what I love every day, which is awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna pop that across there just as an extra little support piece. All right, so let's remove all the backings now. Now the back looks super messy, right? With all of those dimensionals, all those offcuts of dimensionals, but you know what? It doesn't matter because nobody sees that part. And I know that my piece is going to be well supported and it's not going to fall off my card. All right, so I don't want them overlapping too much here. So I'll put that there like so there we go and then i'm going to pop my little lamp post down so i'll pop a bit of glue on that one because i know that he's going to go there um uh, it's freezing up there too megan ah okay uh i still have to get up at 8 a.m to take jack to the station oh no at least it's not 6 a.m but i'm hearing you 8 a.m it's still really cold at the moment yeah we have, in fact, it's, I reckon, I, I reckon that some days are, oh, listen to me, now I sound so, so Aussie, don't I? I reckon <laughs> um, at the moment, eight o'clock is often the coldest time, I think. Um, yeah, it's even colder than earlier in the morning. So there we go, got our cute little lamp post there. Um, yeah, it's just been so cold. 
so so cold uh cindy said i will go back and watch the replay awesome yes and cindy's saying hello to everybody so everyone say hi to cindy <laughs> okay so now we've got all of these other little elements that we're going to add so let's just see what we can fit where um i liked the little seat not sure can we fit that there if we put the little the little bench seat there out the front of the shop oh but then i can't fit my little sign could the little sign go there on the, at the front of the shop maybe it could sit there on the pavement couldn't it on the walk the, the footpath as we call it here in australia mm. and the little plants i was going to put them somewhere too we put a plant there at the bottom of the then we're going to be covering up the cute lamp post aren't we could slip one in there couldn't i you can fill it with all these little pieces we could put a pot plant actually we could put a pot plant there let's put one there i like that just there cut up some more of these dimensionals Love being able to use all these bits and pieces of dimensional because I've had them sitting there for ages and they've been annoying me, but I didn't want to throw them out either. So I'm glad to be able to use them. Let's just pop that there in front of that shop. I really want to use this little bench seat, but I'm just thinking, do I use that and another pot plant? Where's my other little plant? Oh, here, I popped it over there. I could stick it over there, couldn't I? Can I pop it in there? sitting behind there like that that would dress that front piece up a bit wouldn't it yeah i think so i think add the little seat here in front of this shop and the little signpost can go right there because that's not really covering up too much pop the little seat up oh now i've got to be mindful when this closes actually because these are mounted up on dimensionals so they are going to add to the bulk of your card when you close it so just be mindful of that so you're going to have all these layers so this one might cost a little bit more to post if you're mailing it in an envelope if you're mailing it if you're giving it by hand then that's okay but just be mindful of the layers when you are um if you're going to be mailing it yeah i think we better we better not add additional layers so i think i better just pop that chair down the seat at the level that it is already at now i'm going to cut a tiny little bit of dimensional for behind the back of this side of the seat let's just see yep yeah. and then the other side oops okay so i'm just going to flip so I'll show you what i mean i'm going to flip the chair over that way oh i'm pressing buttons over here hang on a sec no we don't want to shut down there we go so we're going to put a little bit of dimensional just on this side of the seat. This is a really little piece to play with, so it might be a bit harder to see on camera. And then on this side of the seat, we're going to use our glue. Okay, that'll hold that up there. Yep, and this side, we'll just put a bit of glue on here. And maybe here too. Okay. Oh, did I take that backing off? No, I didn't. i to remove the backing from that one. So we'll pop our little seat there. That can just be sitting in front of the store, in front of the lolly shop. Just make sure we've got that straight. We want that to be straight. Don't want a wonky bench seat. Nothing worse, sitting on a wonky bench seat. Okay, or park bench, I should say. And then this little signpost, I'm going to put that out the front of this shop too. So, or, or we could put it here. It could go here too. Although we're already covering up that shop a fair bit. Now, I think I'll put it here. I think I'll put it there. So, let's just see. Yeah. So, I might put a tiny little strip of dimensional just along... 
or just cut a little narrow piece. I love the um, the dimensional sheets or the, what's it called? Uh, adhesive foam sheets because you can cut them to your own size. You can also run them through. So they come in um, a large sheet, which I haven't got any out. Oh, I can get, grab them actually to show you. Hang on a sec. I've got to find room for everything here. No, that's not them. I was trying to reach across to see if I can grab them. There we go. Here we go. Okay. Foam adhesive sheets. So they come in, this is the size here. So they come in a big square sheet like that. And then you can cut them. You can see I've got cut bits in there. Um, you can cut them to the size that you want. You can also run them through your die cutting machine with your dies. So if you want the entire piece of your die to be on mounting foam, you can run it through and it'll die cut the shape behind. So say, for instance, if I wanted this pot, I could have run that through with the die over the top and then I would have the entire shape with mounting foam behind it. Great for lettering as well. Um, so yeah, so you can find, find the foam adhesive sheets in my online store um, and they're in the catalogue in the adhesive section as well as all of the, um, the dimensionals that have the, the little hexagon shapes. So we've got lots of choices. All right, so I've got a little bit of dimensional there at the bottom and I'm going to put some glue here at the upper part. And where that dimensional is, that's where it's going to be sitting down on the pavement area. And where the glue is, is where it's going to be attached to the shop. There we go. So we'll pop that there. That's cute. All right. Now we've got to put this little pot plant. This one is going to have to be tucked in behind, I think. Or we could cover up that and put that there. We could. Let's do that. So again, I'll take this little strip using up all my scraps. They're coming in so handy today, all my little scrappy bits of dimensionals. I'll put, let me work out which side. Okay, this side. A little strip on that. Oh, wait, hang on. No, no, that's wrong. Okay, so it's going to be sitting on this piece, which is already mounted up. It's going to be hanging off on this side. So we need the dimensional on the side where it's going to be hanging off the edge. There. A little bit of glue on this side where it's going to be attached to the shop. And make sure we've got that. Ah, but we've got that little bit there, actually. So you know what I'm going to do? Because I've put that dimensional all the way to the bottom there now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little snippy snip here. Cut that little bit off because that was going to get in the way of where, the, um, where I put the foam tape. So now I can just put this here. Over the edge there like that. There we go. There we go. Cute. Look at that. Look at our little scene. Now I've got these little greenery bits as well. So I thought we could add some greenery coming down from, because we've got the greenery across the top here. We can have it flowing down there. And then we could have another piece going across the top here to dress up this one. Or we could have it Actually, should we have it that way and then have that bit going across the top there? Going across the top there or coming down the side here? Oh, but then, they, then they're the same, aren't they? That might look a bit funny if we had them going across like that. And we can always cut some more of those too, if we wanted to. Um, yeah, I think let's do that. Can have it coming out a little bit off the edge of the, the awning there. Let's do that. Okay, 
So we'll just put some little dabs of glue on here. Oh my goodness, I almost need my glasses for this. My eyes don't like focusing up close these days. <laughs> you know, you get to that age and, uh, well, some of you might know, some of you probably don't know yet, but you get to that age and your eyes just don't work as well as they used to. And you need to use your, your glasses a bit more frequently. There we go, we'll have that, that piece there and this one can go across the top. Um, Oh, Cindy said move the lamp post and plant a little oh move the lamp post plant a little more to the right just in front of the window oh sorry I've already stuck that wind um, Cindy and I only just saw your comment will the pat will the plant fit in the middle panel on the right this one here oh I could have popped a plant down in behind there I suppose behind the seat yeah, I could have done that too. Sorry, I wasn't looking at all of the comments. I was busy working out where I was going to, where I'm trying to put things. I was looking and I wasn't reading comments. There we go, we'll pop that one there. Okay, so that's looking pretty cute. Now we need to add our um, sentiments and I was wondering if I can fit a um, shop um, banner at the top of that one. So let's have a look and see what we've got now. I'll just move my tools out of the way and all of that. Alrighty. So stamp set, stamp set. All right. So I'm going to use the sentiment, um, let's get together. And I'm going to put that up here. But then I was thinking, I wonder if I could put a little bakery sign at the top here. As well so let's get those out and what's this um, yeah no that's a lolly shop we don't have one for that do you think I need more greenery here do I need to put another plant behind there although the pot plant will be so much bigger than the bench seat is that gonna look funny I do have an extra bench seat already die cut but it's in a different color um, all right, let's grab these out first. Um, so we want the little sign. We want the bakery sign, which is quite small. We also want the, let's get together sign as well. All right. Let's have a look and see. Um, on this stamp set, we've got good luck. You are such a sweet treat, which would go great with the, the store. But I'm putting my sentiment over here, so that won't kind of go. Um, you've got happy birthday, wish you were here. Then you've got bakery, cafe, hello, books, and the let's get together. So do we want do we want let's get together or do we want wish you were here? Oh, I like let's get together. I think that's nice. Okay, now what color are we going to stamp these in? I have got an array of colors here that are in the paper. So <laughs> I grabbed them all out because when I was designing this last night, I wasn't sure which Oh, it looks good there. You're happy with where I put it, Cindy? Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, so I'm not sure. I'll just actually pop those on blocks before I lose them. Yeah, I'm not sure um, which colour I want to use for the uh, sentiments. I'll just grab a small block for that one, the bakery. So the bakery, I think the bakery should be in, say, copper clay or this one is Cajun craze, but I think we've got a bit of copper clay there as well. Um, yeah, I think the bakery should be, oh, you know what? I might even put the bakery sign on there. Okay, and then this one, is that going to fit in that? No, that's not going to fit in that. Okay, so this one's going to need to be on a strip over here. 
And in fact, I might cut the strip at, um, I might banner the end of the strip over here. So I think I might use, what do you reckon? Should I use white? Because I've got the white background. Sorry, I'm off camera again. There we go. Move that up. So if we, we're going to put this, let's get together there. Or we could stamp it onto crumb cake. Let's try it on white first. We've got the white off cut from making the card. So let's use up some of that. Um, let's just move the card to the side for a moment. And we'll stamp these. Okay, what colour shall I stamp in? I'm thinking copper clay for the bakery sign. White banner look. Yeah, you reckon white banner will look good, Cindy? Yeah, I think so too. So I might stamp both of them in the copper clay. So the bakery is going to be die cut. So actually, let's go. Let's use the angle cut side bakery. And then I'll stamp the let's get together as well. Stamp that over here a little bit and then we can trim that. I didn't use my stamp and pierce mat under there. I probably should have, but that's okay. Um, do we want, you know what I might do? I might stamp a second one because I'm just not sure if I want the signpost around it. I think the, the, um, the signpost around it or like the, um, what do you call it? Yeah, I guess you call it a signpost around it might be a little bit big. But we'll see. So we've got a plain one. We've got one with that around it. And then we've got our sentiment there. Okay. So we'll see how they look in those colours. And then if we don't like it, we can we can change the colours and stamp them again. Because they don't take long to stamp. But it's coming together. It's looking so cute. So adorable. It's such a fun um, designer series paper to play with this one. We've got some really great designer series papers this time in this catalogue. Some really fun ones to play with. And it's a great time to purchase those designer series papers because um, this one is 15% off and a lot of our other ones at the moment are 15% off. So um, yeah, it's a great time to grab them while they're on special. So I ordered some more yesterday. I got some more of... Um, this one, so I'm just going to take this down here, this bottom section to cut that off. Um, I ordered some more yesterday myself. Did anybody else take advantage of the uh, free shipping yesterday? As well as we have the designer series paper special. So it was a great time to go shopping yesterday. Let's get together. Have that off to the side there a little bit, so I might trim that there, and then we can angle the other side. Might need to take a little bit off the bottom, I think. Oh, I need my other little, my little guillotine out to try and line this up. Let's see, if, let's see how we go. See if I can get just a little bit off the bottom there. Oh, yes, that's good. Okay, great. And we'll angle that side. And these two are going to be die cut. So I'll bring in my mini again. I'll pop the sentiment over there so I don't put the mini on top of it. Oh, look, I'm getting, I'm getting washi tape stuck to my watch band. So I save all my little washi tape and I keep using that until I, um, until it completely falls apart or becomes unsticky. So I don't want to waste it. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let's not waste any of this cardstock either because, you know, we like to be thrifty and we might be able to use some of these other pieces if we stamp the sentiment again. Now, I might actually cut these two pieces out and do them 
separately because I don't want to um, I don't want to accidentally have the dies in the wrong spot. So I'm going to cut this one with that die and then this one I'm hoping will fit into this one. Let's see. I don't know if it's going to fit. Oh yes it does. Look at that. It does fit that little rectangle die. Perfect. It's probably what it's made for. I think all those little sentiments are made for this little die. So I'm just going to try and get that nice and straight. Okay, and use use some of our washi tape to hold this one as well. Line that up. And stick that down. There we go. All right, so we'll run these two through. Now, because they are straight edge dies, we want to put them at a little bit of an angle just to avoid that speed hump as we go through. It just helps our rollers to feed the, um, the dies through when you have that straight edge. Oh, Amber just asked that question. Does bakery fit in the small rectangle die in that set? Yes, I have to, <coughs> pardon me. I think I have to keep looking up at the comments a bit more often. I keep on seeing all these comments after I've already done the things <laughs> there we go there we go perfect look at that beautiful I just want to put these dies straight back onto my die sheet so that I don't lose them especially that little one because it was so tiny um, Cindy said place a gem on each side of the bakery banner to make take up the white space that's a great idea yeah, we could do that. That would look like then that it's um that it's sort of nailed in, wouldn't it? Okay, let's have a look. <clears throat> I do like the one with the the outline, I have to say. I do like that. Look, it can go actually go on the roof there. Oh, that would be cute there, wouldn't it? Cuz I was originally thinking I'd put it up the top could go there too all right you all might need to help me where it should go and then we've got the little bakery sign we've got the little so we've got the big one or we can put the little one we could run a little bit of ink around the edges of that one to make it stand out a bit more too which I think would look good you know what I might do Let's get the copper clay. I don't want to do it over the top of my project though, so let's move that out to the side. And let's just dab the edge of our piece, being careful not to smudge that ink, because I'm probably going to get it on my fingers. There we go, so now it's got a little outline. See, I just dabbed the edge of that sentiment label on my ink pad. That just gave me a little bit of a border. All right, now that ink might still be a bit wet, so we'll leave that there for a sec. So I like this. I like this there, but I also like it here. What do you think stands out more? And that could be layered up too because that's the front panel, so it doesn't matter if that sits up a little bit higher. Do you like it there or at the back? There. We could actually mount that up as well so it's at the same height of the shop rather than sitting sort of behind it. Or do we use the little one and have that sitting on top or I think that one would need to go on the roof, the roof there. Um, you like it on the shop, Megan? Yeah, the big one, the larger one, this one here. I do like this one with the border around it. Yes, on the shop. Longer sentiment on the awning. Yeah, Amber likes that one there. Yeah, I like that there too. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, Cindy said place a gem on each side of the banner. Yeah, we could do that too when we come in with our... We'll see how that looks. Longer one on the shop, Cindy says. Yep. Okay, so I think that's the consensus, isn't it? All right, we'll keep this other little one for another project. All righty. Now, do we want to mount it up or do I have it flat? That's the next question. Uh, let's mount it up. Let's mount it up. Give it a little bit of a lift. It will add an extra layer. 
but I think because it's on the front of the card, it won't really matter. It's already going to cost a little bit to send this, so by adding an extra layer now, it's not going to make much difference. So, <laughs> so all good. All right, I'm going to cut a strip of my sheets to use these up, use these extra little off-cut bits up. Let's just see. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Perfect, perfect. Okay. There we go. Oops. Add that there onto the bakery. Make sure we're getting it in the middle of the awning. That looks so cute on there. Great idea, everybody. Look at that. That's so adorable. Oh, that just really lifts that because that was looking a little bit plain, that awning, wasn't it? All right. And then this one, I was going to put over this side. I want to try and get a similar angle to that now i'm not sure how would i go about doing that could i lay that on there could i lay that on there and get the same angle would that work i'm probably not going to get exactly the same angle hold on let's see if i did that if i did that and then nah it's probably not going to be at the same angle. Yeah, I was trying to work out if I could get that at the same angle as the top there, but I don't think that I will. But that's okay. Let's just angle it anyway. Which kind of goes with the angle of the, the lets on there anyhow. So there we go. We can put that on there. Now, do we want to put some ink around the edges of that one to make that stand out? Or do I leave it plain? What do you think? And we'll pop it up on some dimensionals. Do you want some ink around the edges of that one? Uh, oh, the banners pick a punch. I could do, could have done the banners pick a punch on this one. That would have been cute too, but I've cut it now. Yeah, because we do have the banners pick a punch would have been good. We could have put that up there too. But I thought if I angled it sort of like that it kind of is in keeping with the the angles of the um the card but mm, should i do another one and punch the ends with the banners pick a punch to make it like an actual banner at the top what do you think does everyone do you want me to do another one and do the banners pick a punch or shall i just leave it as i have it let me know in the comments what you what you like and should i put a bit of ink around the edges of that to highlight it or should i leave it just on the white ink it yep cindy says to ink it okay what does everyone else say i've got the ink ready what does everybody else think cindy said to ink it anybody else Amber suggested the banners pick a punch. That would have been a great idea if I had have looked a bit quicker. <laughs> but that's okay. All right, let's ink the edges. So I'm going to do the same as I did with the other one. So you can use a sponge dauber, which is what I normally would do, is grab my sponge daubers. I don't actually have them out at the moment. I could grab one and sponge dauber around the edges. But if you want, which will give you a softer edge, okay? So... Um, yeah, so you can get a softer edge using your sponge dauber or if you just dab it in your ink, you will just get that dark line. Can you see that? So it does give you a bit of a border. It saves you having to add an extra layer. If you wanted to add an extra layer of cardstock, you certainly could do that too. But this just gives you that little bit of extra something in a really quick and easy way there we go so now we have that inked edge around our sentiment so that nice and quick and easy there we go all right and that's in the copper clay now because I've gone directly into the ink for the edges it does oh hi Tina how are you um it, Tina said to ink it as well oh there you go yeah so because I've gone around the edges it does come out quite dark um, but that's okay that's right so I've got some more of the um, 
the sheets, the adhesive sheets. So I will cut a piece for this one. My daughter is always complaining about my scissor charms on my tape scissors. Now I know why, because they keep getting tangled. <laughs> okay, so we'll cut a strip to put behind that. There we go. And let me just check, did I just cut that a little bit too thick? Hang on, let's just see. Just a tad, actually. I'll just trim that down a little bit. Just cut that just a tiny bit too thick because I didn't cut it straight, that's why. There we go. And let's see the length. We'll take a little bit off that length. Okay, we'll cut that about there. There we go, save that little piece because we can use that for another project. And that will fit on there beautifully. Okay, great. How are we going for time? I haven't even looked at the time. Oh my goodness, it's nearly one o'clock. I've been on here for nearly an hour. All right, so we're going to line this up over here at the side, at the edge there of the crumb cake layer. And we'll pop that there like that. There we go. How cute is that? Now, we could have added some more of the greenery if we wanted to, but I think that looks pretty good as it is. Yeah, I mean, you could go crazy. You could add so many layers if you wanted to. But, of course, you know, you you can do do it however you like. Hi, Ida, how are you? Oh, you like it as well? Ida thinks it's very cute. Awesome. Now, I've got some embellishments here somewhere. Where did I put them now? Let me find them. There they are. All right. So, I pulled these ones out. These are the enamel dot essentials because I thought these ones would go with the paper so we've got night of navy crumb cake and white so we could put um let's see we could put maybe some crumb cake ones up here because cindy suggested putting some adhesive uh, some embellishments here on the sign so we could whoops if I can get them in the right spot, it's wanting to run away from me. There we go, one there and one there. They look cute. There we go. Great idea, Cindy. They look adorable. Uh, let's see, where else do we want to put? So we've got some blue ones. We could perhaps put some blue ones Maybe not the big one. Maybe the smaller, the next size down, the medium size ones. We'll put a couple up here. Whoops. Oh, yeah, there it is. Put a couple of blue ones up here and maybe another blue one down here somewhere. And then we've got some white ones as well. Oh, you know what? I wonder, if we put a white one inside the lamp? Would that look, would that look like light? Usually the light's sort of more yellow than that though, isn't it? But we could put one there. What do you think? It's not sitting very well there though. No, I don't think I like it there. Actually, I changed my mind. There we go. Oh, wait, we'll take that back off. Um, okay, so we've got those two there. Oh, you know what? We could put... We could put one of these here on the little door handle. That would be cute. There on the door handle. It's very subtle. Um, all right, and then we've got... So the crumb cake ones are not easy to see on the crumb cake, so we might not use those ones, but how about if we put some of the white ones here? We put some of the white ones down here. Sometimes it's hard to decide where to put your embellishments, isn't it? 
So you can put them wherever you like, really. There we go. So we've used the three different colours. We've got three on each panel. Um, this one's got the two there and the one on the door, which is a little bit harder to see, but that's okay. This one's got the three there and three there. There we go. So we are finished our little project. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could add Wink of Stella to, um, you know, sparkle up some of the things, maybe some of the, the, um, the candy here, if you want to give them a little bit of a sparkle, you know what, let's do it. Let's just do it. Wink of Stella. Got my Wink of Stella brush. Oh, actually, that's the old one. I think that one's empty. This one. This is my new one. Give it a little shake. And I'm just going to go over the little ice creams here. And the little sundaes up here. Let's go over the lollies as well, or candy as they say in America, just to give a little bit of a sparkle. And of course, that's going to take a little bit to dry, like a few minutes. It doesn't take too long. So we want to be careful about not closing our card all the way up while that's still wet because it's going to get on the other side, on the other panel there. Now let's see, what else, is there anything else we can sparkle up? Um, we could we could sparkle up the greenery on this one. Give them a little bit of glitter. Could even do the the um, greenery that's hanging on, or hanging off, the front of the shops there. Just a little bit here and there, just to add a bit of sparkle. I love adding a bit of wink of Stella, just to add that little bit of sparkle to our project. And what about over here on this one? Let's see, what could we do? We could do the plant here at the front. Mm. We've got little plants here, so we could do those there too. I just noticed this one, this little shop has actually got a little bench seat out the front of it. Did you notice that? That's a little bench seat here. So we've got that bench seat and then we've got our little park bench as well. So that's pretty cool. Oh, we've got a little cake here. Let's. Let's glitz up the little patty case that it's sitting in. And yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. There we go. So there we have it. We have our cute little card. Now, of course, that Wink of Stella is still wet, so I'm not gonna close it all the way. But when our card stands up, it's going to look like that. Okay. And then, so you'll see um, just that front shop and you'll see the sentiment label a little bit of the sentiment label and then when you open up you have a full street of all the shops isn't that fun and it will stand up like that now if you wanted to you could put um you could put another shop here so you sort of got a shop on the back street as well um and then you can use these little white panels to write on so there you go. So thank you so much, Cindy. I'm glad you like it. Oh, Megan said she might case my card. Oh, that's great, Megan. Yes, that go ahead and case. That would be awesome. So I gave all the measurements at the beginning, Megan, and showed two different ways of creating the diagonal fold. So if you haven't made a diagonal fold card before, um, I did give some tips on that at the beginning. So feel free to go back and watch the replay on that. Um, uh megan said color it yellow oh was that oh for the lamp post great idea megan actually let's try that let's see what would we need um daffodil delight dark daffodil delight i'll do dark daffodil delight on what size did i have was it the mini one or the next size i think it was the mini one wasn't it would the next size one up be better? Was it that one? No, I think it was the mini one, wasn't it? I don't remember what size I had now. Yeah, no, that one's too big. See, I need to look up at comments more. <laughs> All right, so I'm taking my um, my stamp and write. Oh, sorry, my stamp and blend because these are alcohol markers. They will dry on non-porous surfaces 
So because these matte, uh, sorry, what are these ones called again? Enamel dot essentials. They're shiny, but this will actually dry on there. It might take a few moments, but it will dry on there. And then we can take this and pop that in the lantern or the, uh, the lantern part of the street lamp. If I can get it off my take your pick tool. There we go. Yeah. Good thinking, Megan. Let's press that on lightly. I don't want to take off any of the yellow if that hasn't dried. But I think it's pretty well dried. There you go. Cute. That was a great idea. Look at that. So there we go. Isn't that just so sweet? So cute. And we, we weren't too fussy with inking of the background, but, I mean, you could go crazy if you really wanted to. But, yeah, there you go. So I hope you really enjoyed that. All right, let me tip the camera back up so that I can say goodbye to you all face-to-face, -face, as I always like to do. So bear with me one moment. Here we go. Okay, you all still there? All righty. Nearly there, just adjusting my lights. And there we go. So, as I said, I took my jumper off. I had my well, I had my jacket on when I started because it was um quite cold in here, but now I've warmed up with all the crafting. So there you go. That's a good a good um, tip for when we're feeling cold in the winter is to start crafting and we'll warm up. <laughs> so there you go. So there's another view of the card. So just so cute. Those little shops are so adorable. Oh my goodness. If you don't already have this designer series paper, you have to get it. It's so cute. And you saw the um, the the sentiments in the stamp set as well um, that I used and the dies also so you just need the whole suite really because it's really fun to play with so I'm very happy with how that turned out that was pretty good for a uh, a midnight creative or midnight or one o'clock I don't even know what time <laughs> a midnight creative um, project that I just threw together um yeah lots of fun thank you so much everybody for joining me now remember that designer series paper the la shop 12 by 12 designer series paper is one of the papers that is on special at the moment it's discounted by 15 percent and um yeah so you can get it much more cheaply at the moment so it's a great time to grab those beautiful designer series papers um while they are on special so there's that one and then there's 12 other paper packs as well that are all on special i do have a flyer if you want to have a closer look to see um, which ones are on special and how much they are so if you click on my um my link in my description it'll take you through to all it'll open up all of my links and then you can click on the one for the designer series paper um sale at the moment so yeah Oh, Ida says gorgeous project. Thank you so much, Ida. I'm glad you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and creating those, I've got to create more of those diagonal fold cards. They are a lot of fun to create. I gave you all the tips of how to create those at the beginning. So if you miss the beginning, make sure you go back and watch the replay and get all of the tips about how to create those cards. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. And I gave you measurements for all of the layers and some tips on how to get that angle on those layers as well okay so yeah so be sure to go back and watch um watch all of that at the beginning as well all right well i hope you have a great rest of your week we've only got a couple more days um and then we're on to the weekend again so have a great weekend as well i look forward to seeing you all again really soon um if there's anything that i can help you with or you have any questions please feel free to get in contact with me um, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Again, my link, um, if you want to email me and you don't know my email, you can grab that from my um, link tree links in the description. So be sure to check that out if you need to contact me. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook later, you can just message me through Messenger as well and grab, grab me that way. Um, but yeah, check all that out and 
Remember, I've got my ribbon and trim samplers at the moment as well. The registration for that closes on Monday, but if you would like to get a big variety of lots of different ribbons at a really affordable price, then check that out. You'll also find that in my links as well. So um, yeah, if you wanna check that out and then there's a registration form there if you'd like to participate. All right, have a great week, weekend, and I will see you again really soon. Happy crafting, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Bye.